Hello, welcome to Katrina's Creations. This is a requested tutorial. Um, it is in reference to the Swedish Lines shawl, which I just recently made. This is a pattern by Caroline Weems. It is available on Blueprint for as a kit for $23.50, or you can buy the pattern separately and the yarn separately. Uh, the yarn is currently on sale at Blueprint. It is Kamina Alpaca, and I believe it's running $3.32 per skein. Uh, so you can pur purchase it as a kit or individually. Now, I can't show you exactly how to do the shawl because it is a paid-for pattern, but there are some techniques that are used in this pattern that are used on a lot of shawl patterns, and so I thought I would show how to do those two techniques, one being the I-cord edging and the I-cord bind off and what the difference is between the two. So let me get started by showing you first what the difference is and what they look like. So this is a portion of my Swedish Lines shawl. This edging right here is I-cord edging. I-cord has a, a roll to it. It's a tubular edging. Now the reason this is considered edging and not a bind off because it is knit it is actually knit as part of this row. So I-cord edging is vertical. It runs perpendicular to the knitting. So here's my knitting, here's the edging. And it is incorporated and it is knit as I actually knit the row. Now I-cord bind off, which is what is seen at the end here, and I'll hold this up so you can see it. You can see it kind of rolls that is done as you cast the stitches off or bind the stitches off. And it runs the same direction as you're knitting. It is part of the final row of knitting. So again, the difference is I-cord edging runs perpendicular to your knitting. It is done as you are knitting. You're not binding off any stitches. It is actually created as part of the row and I-cord bind off is when you are doing your very last row and casting your stitches off of your needles. So now let me show you how to do the different types. Um, I did a I-cord bind off tutorial a while back, but this one is slightly different uh, than the other one. There are several different types of I-cord bind offs, but we're going to get started first with the I-cord edging here. I have a little section that I have been working on. This is the I-cord edging right here. And right now it looks a little flat because in the beginning it does. The, the longer it gets, the more it starts twisting. Now, I'm going to flip this around so you can see the back end of it. The back end of it right here, you can see, does have some wider stitches right in here. The I-cord is created by pulling the stitches tightly together. If you don't pull them tight enough, you will get this kind of loop, even pulling them tight, you will get a slight carryover, but in the vast scheme of things, it doesn't show up much. But let me show you how to do this. With your, your yarn in the back, you're going to slip the first three stitches as if to purl. So you're going to slip one, two, and three. Now here's where the trick comes in, and it's really not a trick, it's just you've got to make sure you do it. Your yarn is still carrying on this first stitch here in the back. These are just loose. So when you do this fourth stitch, what creates the tube is pulling this tight between this first and fourth stitch. So when you wrap that around, you really want to give it a pull. And you can see just now how the stitches drew in. It's almost like a drawstring effect. It's going to bunch them together and that's what causes this tube. So let me finish going across the next, the rest of this row and I'll show you what you do on the wrong side. Now on this sample I'm just doing the garter stitch until I get to these last three stitches that are part of the I-cord. Those three I'm going to purl. So I'm going to knit across and 
So I'm going to purl these next three stitches. Before I do that, you can see, even though I pulled this tight, you can see that kind of ladder right there, right where I pulled these stitches across. So even though I drew it tight, you do have this here. So now I'm going to purl these three stitches. And you can see they still you're always going to have a slight wider stitch coming across here no matter how tight you pull it it's still going to be there but let's do it one more time again your yarn is in the back you're going to slip the first three stitches then you're going to knit the fourth and you're going to pull this really tight when you do so and I will show you what happens okay now I'm going to pull it tight and watch this line in the back you can see it pulls it in that's what you want to happen so you really want to hold that fourth stitch tightly and then you're ready to go across Now on the wrong side, again, I'm going to knit across and then I'm going to purl those last three stitches. I've now knit all the way across the back of the last of the wrong side. Here is my ladder. Even though you saw how tight I pulled it, it's still running across there. I'm going to purl these three stitches. And there you go you can see how it kind of rolls around again you will always have these little ladders right here but this is on the wrong side of your work so the right side should look smooth like this and you should see a definite rounded edge where the, the stitches kind of roll around the edge next we're going to get ready for the I cord bind off now the I-cord bind off that I did a few weeks ago that I showed you actually added two stitches to begin. This one you don't. In this case, this is another I-cord bind off. Again, the I-cord bind off runs the same direction as your knitting does. The I-cord edging runs perpendicular to your knitting. So we're now getting ready to take these stitches off. So you're going to knit the first two stitches. There's one and two. Then you're going to knit through stitch. Then you're going to knit two stitches through the back loop. So you're going to go in through the back. So instead of going knitting like this, you're going to do this through the back and then knit the together. So you've now taken four stitches to three. You're going to slide all three of these stitches back onto your needle and you're going to do the same thing. You do want to make sure because just like on the edging, your yarn is now over here. Even though your stitch is here, your yarn is two stitches back or three stitches back. So you're going to make sure you pull this first stitch snugly. So you're going to knit one and two. And then you're going to knit through the back two loops. You're going to slide it through here, through here. And then knit the two together. And again, your yarn is coming off of the third stitch. These first two stitches do not have yarn attached. You're going to slide them back onto the needle. And you're going to continue doing this. Just again, make sure that first stitch, you really pull the yarn snugly because it's got to carry across the back. So again, it's acting like a drawstring. So you're doing one and two 
and knitting two through the back loop. And transferring back to the left needle. We're now down to the last three stitches. You can see how the bind off looks as it rolls around the edge here. Let's look at the back. Here's you can see the back kind of rolling here as well. Now we have three stitches left which is not enough to do our pattern. So what do we do? We're going to knit one stitch instead of two, just knit one, knit through the back two. Now we have two stitches, we'll stitch, slip those over and then just knit those last two back through the back loop. And then you just have one stitch left which you will loop off, which you will loop and tie off and weave in. So I hope this has been helpful for the I-cord edging and bind off. And thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, please give me a thumbs up. Thanks again. Bye.